Hi, I'm Lloyd Pye. This video is about the physical characteristics of the star child skull, one of the most profound and compelling mysteries in the world today. After 13 years of scientific testing by doctors, geneticists, and other experts, the collected evidence strongly suggests the star child skull is not human in whole or in part. Such a radical assertion definitely requires the extraordinary proof demanded by this well-known quote, and that is precisely what this video will provide. The Starchow skull was found in 1930 in a mine tunnel in the Copper Canyon region of northwest Mexico. It was found with a normal human female skull, and carbon-14 testing has determined that both skull owners died about 900 years ago. The human's lower face is intact, while the star child has lost both cheekbones, the bottom half of its nasal bones, and its upper jaw and teeth. Overall, these two skulls show dramatic physical differences in every respect. If we consider 25 physical points of reference on the human skull and the star child skull, not a single match can be found, not one. Even more remarkable is that some of those variations are unprecedented on Earth. Let's begin with the obvious, which from the front view is the depth and shape of their eye sockets, along with the expanded parietal bones at each side of the star child. A more subtle difference is that humans have brow ridges that dip down to meet the tops of their noses, while the star child has neither a brow ridge nor a dip. Also, the human's eye socket is two inches deep, while the star child's is only one half inch deep, a 75% reduction. Whatever kind of eyes belong in the star child's sockets, they could not possibly look like or function like human eyes. Creases like the one in the upper rear of the star child can result when a skull's bone plates fuse together abnormally instead of joining properly like jigsaw pieces. However, no part of the star child skull is abnormally fused, so this crease can only result from its genes telling it to grow that way, precisely the opposite of how human skulls are shaped. Any mammal's inion is the bony lump present where its neck connects to its head. Feel your own bump where your neck meets your skull. Unlike all of us, the star child has no inion, only a shallow depression where it should be. This is a radical difference. Another radical difference is that a human skull balances at two-thirds toward its rear and well toward the rear of its neck. The star child skull balances at the center of its cranial volume, directly above the center of its neck, which provides much easier movement from front to back and side to side. Yet another radical difference is that the two skulls have roughly the same external dimensions, yet the star child's brain volume is one-third larger. The human skull holds 1,200 cubic centimeters, which is normal for its size, while the same size star child skull has 1,600 cubic centimeters, 400 more. One reason the star child skull has so much more brain is its lack of frontal sinuses which in humans is a cauliflower-shaped cavity in the central forehead above and between the eyes. Humans are very rarely born without frontal sinuses, and in those cases, x-rays reveal at least vestiges of what failed to grow properly. However, in the star child skull, no such vestige is seen, and no sign of frontal sinuses effectively separates it from all of us. In humans, brain mass presses straight down on the cerebellum in the blue circle, which securely tucks it into the curve at the rear of the skull. The star child's extra brain mass presses down at a steep angle that would squeeze a human cerebellum out of the frame and magnum, the hole where the spine enters the skull, resulting in death. That didn't happen to the star child, so a few brain experts have speculated that its brain matter might be denser than human brains, which is about as radical as differences get. What about neck size and shape? The points where muscles attach to bone reveal the star child's neck was oval rather than circular, and its volume was half of its companion. This leads to speculation that the star child might have had no voice mechanism. Indeed, its extra large brain and extra small neck could mean it communicated by telepathy. This startling idea is bolstered by a gene in humans known as FOXP2, which is a key element in our ability to speak. In the video associated with this one that deals with DNA, it shows that the star child has a FOXP2 gene that is incredibly different from its human counterpart. Yet another radical difference results from scaling the star child's greatly reduced cheekbone stubs, which allows a projection of their size and shape, which in turn reveals that its entire face would be much smaller than a normal human's. 
Additional evidence for the star child's much smaller face is found in the difference between the attachment areas of their chewing muscles. The star childs cover only half the surface area of a human's. Even more evidence that supports the star child having a very small face is found in one half of its upper jaw, or maxilla. Fully detached from the rest of the star child's skull, its size approximates that of an infant. Despite the maxilla fragment's very small size, a close-up shows its two visible teeth were heavily worn. This requires several years of chewing food laden with the grit that results from preparation using grinding stones. This much wear has led some experts to conclude the star child was at least a young adult when it died, and possibly much older. The star child's teeth are directly related to several highly unusual facts about its bone. On the exterior surface of human bone, small pits called lacunae are an essential part of biological functioning. The star child has no lacunae, which is one more physical oddity entirely unique to it. Yet another radical difference between the two skulls is the thickness of their respective bones. The star child's is substantially thinner, yet two or three times stronger. Nine other people and myself have cut into both skulls, and the difference between the two is jaw-dropping like cutting wood versus sheet metal. One reason for the star child's greatly increased hardness becomes evident when comparing the chemical composition of its bone to normal human bone. The carbon and oxygen levels in human bone are greatly increased in the star child and the abundant calcium and phosphorus are reduced. This gives the star child bone a chemical profile similar to the hardest part of a human body, tooth enamel. Another aspect of the star child's extraordinary hardness is revealed in a magnified cross-section of a piece of its bone cut by a power tool. The scattered openings are cancellous holes where the bone's marrow is created, stored, and moved. What is so unusual here are the various fibers splayed across the surface. This is a close-up of a knot of those fibers. Notice the filament pulled out of a track in the matrix of the bone. It's wrapped into a knot formed by other, thicker fibers then it miraculously emerges. The photographs of these fibers were analyzed by mycologists who concluded they were not fungi, moles, yeast, or bacteria. Here is an exposed portion of a fiber embedded along the inner surface area, the part that rested against the star child's brain. All of these fibers are extremely durable and are woven through the bones matrix like rebar through concrete. One of the best examples of their durability is this tip sheared rather than smoothly cut by a high-speed blade. Nothing like these fibers are known to be in the bones of any other creature on Earth. The star child is unique in this, and as we've just seen in many other physical characteristics. So, what on Earth is the star child skull? Is it even from Earth? That's what we need to determine about it, once and for all, beyond all reasonable doubt. And as soon as we can secure the funding we need to do that, here is the group we'll join. In the 1500s, Nicholas Copernicus, Johannes Kepler, and Galileo Galilei moved the Earth and all of humanity from the center of the universe to our proper place as a planet orbiting the sun. In 1903, Orville and Wilbur Wright lifted humanity onto their shoulders and flew us all into the world as we know it today. In 1969, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin again changed the self-perception of every human then and since. They took the first steps for all of us toward our inevitable future in space. Now, in 2012, the star child skull is poised to again alter the self-perception of everyone. It can transform humans from isolated beings on an illuminated rock in the vastness of the universe into members of whatever galactic community might be out there. To make that happen, we have to find someone with the means and the will to join us taking the next giant step in human history. To make that connection, we need help sharing this information with as many people as possible. And this is where you come in. By helping us do what we have to do, you can take a direct role in changing human history. It's a rare opportunity in any lifetime, so I hope each of you can find a way to take advantage of it. And good luck to us all.